Hi, my name's Laura. Um, I've been a teacher for about seven years. Um, my first job was at a school in Ascot working with young children um, and then I went to Poland where I taught um, children, teenagers and adults and I worked there for a year. Um, and then I came back to London and I've been working at Embassy CES School in London um, for about yeah six years now. Um, it's a great school, we have a really good mix of nationalities, it's interesting and um, in the future I think I'd like to go into teacher training but we'll just have to see where that goes. Right, good morning everyone. Um, I'm going to show you a sign. Okay, this is a sign that I saw somewhere in London, okay? Can you just read it for me? What does it say, Pamela? Wife wanted. wife wanted, yes, exactly. Okay, so this is a sign saying wife wanted. I'd like you to try to imagine with your partner, try to think about where I saw this sign. Okay, so where did I see it? And why did somebody put this sign where they put it? Okay, so with the person next to you, just try to imagine where did I see this sign? And what does it mean? Why did they put this sign there? Okay, just try to guess with your partner in pairs. Okay, can I hear some Somebody of your ideas? You think uh, the, uh, you, you saw on the internet? On the internet? Yes. Okay, and, and the uh, meaning? And uh, the wife uh, looked for a husband. The wife looked for a husband? Yes. Mm. Do you agree? Do you think it's a wife looking for a husband? No. You think it's the opposite? It's the opposite. The husband the, looking for a wife? The husband, husband looking for, looking for, okay, for a wife. Okay, okay, <laughs> all right, that's okay. <laughs> So yes, a man looking for his wife. Yes, yeah, so on the internet. Okay, did you have any other ideas? Newspaper. Newspaper, yes. yeah, could have been a newspaper. And um, some sections for people who is um, finding for a date or for a couple. Yes, yeah. yes, trying to look for yes. a date. And they put her, um, her or his picture. Yeah. And I'm 25 years old and I, I, um, prefer, um, I don't know her or his profession or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you call that kind of advert? when you put it in the newspaper to try to find a partner. Do you know? Partner finder. Something. Partner finder, um, yeah, something similar. <laughs> a lonely heart ad. Ad is short, what's the long word? Ad? Advertisement, Advertisement yeah. So a lonely heart ad, um, yes. It could have been, yes. So it's a shop, and in the window of the shop, they had this sign, wife wanted in London. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a man put this advertisement in his shop window. Okay, now I want you to try to imagine about this man. Okay, and I'm going to give you some questions to think about. Try to imagine what this man is like. Here are your questions. I'll give you one between two so you can work together with your group. Okay, can I stop you? Let's have a look and let's listen to some of your ideas. Um, so let's have a think. First of all, what kind of man is he? Anyone? Ugly. <laughs> okay, ugly perhaps, yes? Maybe in his 40s. In his 40s. Okay, late 40s, mid 40s, early? Mid or late. Mid to late. Mid to late. Mid to late 40s, right, okay. Mid to late 40s, okay. Right, let's think about the woman. So, what kind of woman does he want? Younger. Younger. Younger than him, right. Obviously. Right. How much younger? Beautiful. 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 Okay. Maybe for just just for make a construct uh, co construct construct a funny character funny character funny. Ha, ha, if, ha. if yes if if he is um, boring yeah. a boring person maybe 
he wants something lively, like, yes. energetic, lots of fun. Yes. Okay, all right, yes. Do you agree? No. No. Oh, Pamela, tell me why not. <laughs> I was definitely no. Because, I don't know, maybe it, he knows that if he puts an advertisement yeah. in a shop, it's difficult to attract a, a beautiful woman. Okay. Maybe maybe the women that that uh, responds that advertisement mm -hmm. also needs a husband. Or right. Something. Okay. Um, and finally, do you think many women answered his ad? No. No. Maybe. No. no? no. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. How many do you think? Between ten to twenty. Ten to twenty. <laughs> so it was quite successful. <laughs> They're <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> there are a lot of desperate women in London. Maybe There's lots of desperate women in London. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> how many have you met? <laughs> we'll stop. Um, Pablo, how about you? What do you think? You said he's crazy. I think he... <laughs> he has lucky if he finds one. <laughs> he's lucky if he finds one. Okay, so we've got one, 10 to 20. Any more? No. Zero. None. Zero. Right, okay, well, we're going to find out the real answers to these questions now, okay? We're going to read a text. Um, it comes from the newspaper. The headline, special offer, I need a wife. So, can you read this text and try to find out what the real answers to these questions are, okay? Okay, um, so the woman that he wants is? Pretty. Pretty? <laughs> Pretty-ish. What does this mean, pretty-ish? Uh, Ish no. is kind of like not Marvelous. exactly Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. but not a monster. Mm -hmm. Pretty-ish. <laughs> okay, so if you can think somewhere in between Angelina Jolie and monster, you're pretty-ish. And um, how old? Younger. Yeah. Younger? Yeah. <laughs> 17 ish to 30 ish. Okay, this ish we can use to kind of say not exactly. You can add ish? You can to any adjective. For example, what colour is my skirt? For example, greenish. Greenish, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, it's very common with time. What time do you want to meet? Mm, 12 ish? 1 ish? 2 ish? Okay, very common. Ish. Do you love him? Mm, ish. <laughs> for example, for example. Okay, so um, from this text, um, I'm now going to divide you into two groups, okay? Um, into men and women. Um, so you guys are the men, okay? And you guys are the women. Now, men, um, I'd like you to imagine that you are the shopkeeper, okay? And you want to um, create some questions that you can ask your potential wives when they come for your meeting, okay? I'd like you to write about mm, five or six questions. Questions that you think would be good for finding out if this woman is the perfect wife for you. Girls, Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I want you to imagine you've seen this advert, okay? And you're interested in this man. And I'd like you to imagine a new personality for yourself. Oh, okay. So just try to think of perhaps some life experience, um, some characteristics, some hobbies, some skills. Maybe you're very good at cooking, for example, and maybe a new name or a new age that will attract the man. Okay? So just three or four minutes, just try to think about who you are. Okay, so we've got our characters. Women, you know who you are. Men, you've got your questions. What's going to happen now is I'm going to get the men to come up and stand here. And I want you to make a circle, but facing out, okay? Women, I want you to also come up, but you're going to make a circle going around the men so that you're facing um, the men, okay? So that you'll be face to face with each other. So when you're ready, you can stand up. Let's have the men first. The men just come here. Women, choose a man and stand in front of him. <laughs> right, okay. Okay, I'm just going to stand on this chair. Okay, just wait one second. Okay, so um, I'll clap my hands, and when I clap, you can start asking your questions. Women, at this stage, if you want to ask any questions to the man, for example, how much do you earn? Very important. You can ask these questions, okay? 
And um, when I clap my hands twice, you can stop and I will rotate you so that you can talk to another person. Okay? <laughs> okay, ready? Yes. And go. <laughs> um, all right, let's move the men. So if the men, if you can just move around to the right, left? Oh, you're left, yeah. <laughs> okay, so just move around so that you have a new partner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and when you're ready, go. <laughs> okay. Um, so, men, can I ask you to move around and go on to the next future wife? Okay. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, I hope you enjoyed talking to each other. You can sit back down now. And just relax. What was your objective in, in the lesson? we saw what did you want the students to get out of it um well the main objective was to sort of set up a role play and then for the students to get involved in the role play so i suppose for them to get out of it is an opportunity to practice speaking and sort of an opportunity to practice a role play can be quite good for freeing them because they can take on another role obviously and then they can sort of feel less inhibited than they do when they're perhaps talking as themselves and do you use role play quite a lot yeah for yeah. that reason yeah yeah, and I find particularly with younger sort of teenagers, younger adults, it works really well because they often feel quite self-conscious speaking another language and they feel quite strange. But if they can take on another role, it sort of frees them. They don't feel responsible so much exactly. for what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also it gets them, they can sort of, they can try language that they wouldn't ordinarily use just in everyday conversations. They can sort of, I don't know, talk as a role. You used quite a lot of pair work and group work in the lesson. Why did you do that? Well, for things like the prediction for the reading task, I think it's quite good for them to be able to share ideas initially, because I think if you just ask a class for their responses, they might not have ideas or they might not feel confident about their ideas. Whereas if they've already shared some ideas and they feel a bit more confident about doing that. And also, of course, it gives them an opportunity to practice speaking. And when they were doing the speaking, you didn't correct them very often. And that's a conscious decision on your part, I think. Yeah. Um, Again, sort of about confidence, really. If you're constantly correcting them, they might sort of feel slightly inhibited and that they don't want to talk. I'm more interested in getting fluency and getting the message across, so long as it doesn't necessarily um, cause like a breakdown in communication. I think it's quite a good thing just to let them go. And I tend to sort of note down errors and then look at those later, because it's important, obviously, to have both. And so you pick up some stuff to work on while yeah. they're talking. Yeah, yeah, notice sort of if they've made a mistake like a slip, just something to point out and just kind of say, oh, I don't know, they missed off the S, whether he and she verb or something like that. Or, or if they've made a mistake because they didn't know how to say something, kind of try to reformulate and say, okay, you said this, I think this is what you mean, and just kind of try to input there. So. But quite specifically, not sort of interrupting right in the middle of everything yeah. and then stopping it. Yeah, down. yeah. There was, there was a, a, a very enjoyable moment in the middle of the lesson where you start teaching them how to say ish and, and, and <laughs> then time and, and your greenish skirt and things like that. Was that planned? Was that something you were um, going to do? Well, they seemed interested in it and it seemed something that like, they were sort of slightly quizzical as to what it was. So you had their interest already. I just think it's quite a nice little thing ish and something that wouldn't necessarily be in a course book or something. At one point in the lesson, you got all the students into the middle of the room and, and had them working in a group in the middle of the room. Why did you do that? I think it's good sometimes for a change of focus. And I think particularly at the end of a lesson, it can be nice because people get tired. And if they're just sitting, perhaps their energy might start to sort of flag. And if you get them up, it kind of renews everybody and it starts to get things moving. And sort of with their, with their minds as well, start sort of working again and they kind of wake up. And also it gives people an opportunity to work with, um, with people that they don't necessarily always work with. 
for example, if they always sit next to a certain person in the classroom, they always talk to them, so they don't get a chance to talk to the man who sits over there. So this kind of thing gives everybody a chance to speak to everybody and they can obviously learn more things. And you also had that thing where they moved around. Mm. Yeah, so again, you're getting them to speak to a range of different people. So in that, they're getting to talk to different people. They're getting to listen to different accents. And they're also, uh, they're making friends as well. Yeah, you based your lesson on, on this, this guy looking for a wife yeah. and, and speed dating, that kind of thing. Mm. Can you think of any situations where you'd be uncomfortable about using that material or not? I tend to use that material quite often and basically love and relationships are something that everybody can relate to so it tends to be engaging for everyone. <laughs> but perhaps in certain cultural backgrounds it might be viewed as risque I suppose. You always have to be sensitive about the material that you're using and you don't want to offend anybody of course. So um, I guess it depends on knowing your students and knowing, knowing where you can take them basically and understanding where they come from and what their interests are and stuff like that. But generally that topic goes down a treat. <laughs>